Welcome back to us relentlessly searching for human humane architecture here in Hawaii, specifically on our island of Oahu, which different than all the other islands has something that is very, very specific because we actually have, and picture one illustrates that we have an urban part of our island and we have a rural part of our island. And today we bring in a guest, Wyatt Butterball, and I was tempted to Hi. pronounce the first part of your name the German way, right. Butter. Right. So welcome, Wyatt. Hi. Great well, to have you on the show. Thank and you. to share uh, with the audience, uh, I call it a self-study in architecture. Uh, but before we go there, we want to put it into a context of uh, previous um, uh, representatives in the profession who have dealt with that. So the, the picture number two is uh, from the 1845, I think exactly, where cities which basically just a while, short while ago, we, we have reached a point where we have more people living in cities than in the country. And but this was way before that when industrialization started, but there was a guy, this Tarot guy, who already sort of escaped the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since, the sort of hero for escapism. Um, Seeking solace. Or exactly. Solitudes, more. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he did that in his little cabin. And um, the, the other guy was actually 100 years later, and if you can have picture number three, and, and this is uh, what many consider to be the grand seigneur of architecture, Mr. City, the radieuse Le right. Corbusier. Decides to go and have a cabana himself exactly. you know, to, to escape that city life. Exactly, and, and here it is from the outside. And that's why we call this show, uh, if we can get the next picture, Wyatt's uh, mm -hmm. Cabana Mobilier, because this is about dwelling in an unconventional way, right. uh, facing the challenges of our island. And I use the term mobilier because I'm unsatisfied with the term real estate mm -hmm. for dwelling shelter we own. Right. And the, uh, the word that's used in Germany comes from France is called immobilier, right. which uh, means there's something immobile, which also implies there could be something mobile. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I also want to say hi to uh, my dear researcher, uh, fellow um, Amelie, uh, hi me, who is somewhere out there and hopefully watches and is encouraged by you stepping forward and pioneering this kind of typology here. Hi, Amelie. <laughs> yeah, and do you want to go to picture number five and talk a little bit about this uh, sort of grandfather of yours, not literally, but figuratively here? Sure. Uh, Cor uh, Corbu Corbusier, I'm not going to butcher that, um, or at least hopefully. Uh, was a bit of an inspiration in this. I was in this area where his cabana is still. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get to see it, unfortunately, but it was inspiring the way he utilized space um, in such a small space, getting all the necessities. Um, and f uh, for him, there was a lot, I think, <laughs> a lot more experience before he undertook this. Um, I'm not sure he didn't build it, did he? Well, he built the interior, he so the exterior, the exterior is rather vernacular and okay. rugged and I think existing, and he yeah. basically did the interior Got sort it. of a customization, Got one, Got one should say. And you're right, whereas he actually did it towards the conclusion to say, say right. it's safe of, of his life. Yeah. You upfront that. I did, I upfronted, and, and, and it was an attempt to, uh, you know, design my own space so mm -hmm. that uh, I didn't have to wait till 60 because mm -hmm. the prospect of owning land in Hawaii is, you know, for someone just coming out of school is, is pretty minimal unless you've got a lot of financial backing mm -hmm. from family or mm -hmm. whatnot. But, um, you know, I wanted to, to fast forward that or s start with my own space and not, you know, wait so long to get mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so that was one of the big incentives. Yeah. And, yeah. and the inspiration here, sort of mentorship number six, is, uh, is the interior of Le Corbusier's. Mm -hmm. And the previous picture showed he basically used this as his sort of artist studio because he was working as an artist as much as an architect. Right. And he was, as one sees here, you know, uh, 
uh, painting naked, which was the scandal at the right. time. It could be yeah, but still, in France, still, it's you know, it's a rather liberal, you know, yeah. and the climate allows right. it. So it's just rather seems right. okay. Yeah, and uh, and after that, we should also probably not uh, hide to say how he ended. Then right, right. Yeah, he uh, he decided to swim out into the med. Mediterranean, mm -hmm. um, with some dignity, I guess, kind of like a dog when they know they're passing on, they don't want to bring down the pack, so they decide to, you know, go out in the wilderness and pass away with dignity, like Lake Corb yeah, did himself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the number seven shows which all this facilitates uh, a rather tiny house. This is sort of the original plan with original French, uh, basically legend here. Right. That shows it's really about clever space management uh, in many ways and multi-purposing and multifunctioning. Right. And if you go to the next picture, that's what you did as well. Here is your very own <laughs> right. signature so, uh, plan. So I, I allotted space in a way that was uh, giving public the most. Um, and that would be at the uh, the right side there, um, the living room slash you know the deck. So it kind of the space is allowed to you know open up and you, know, you occupy more than just that bit. Mm -hmm. And then as you move back, you get to more and more private spaces. So at the far far end, you're at the bathroom and the living quarters and the closet. It's trying mm -hmm. to concentrate that into s as small a space as can mm -hmm. as I could be, you know. So that was the intention with my mm -hmm. layout, mm -hmm. from private to public, yeah. semi -public. And I, as, as we had the chance to work together, I, I appreciate you having uh, put in the North Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, de and I mean, it's dependent on where orientation is very key right. in how de we build. Right. So. But it, of course, is mobile, so that orientation could change yeah, as well. Yeah. And, and keyword mobile, let's put this into a sort of an island context, if we can get the next picture here. Um, uh -huh. Say something about that one, if you uh, don't It's mind. gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> depend <laughs> everyone depend everyone could, uh, <laughs> could leave their house and live in one of those. That's actually kind of a nice one. But um, yeah, I guess that would be the, the reason I, I feel Hawaii doesn't want trailer homes is because they're not aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, but if there is an alternative, which is something I've, I've, uh, you know, I've attempted here or mm -hmm. done, mm -hmm. and um, and this is a middle ground. These are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, I think it could become even more attractive. And and there is a tiny home fever across the nation and the mm -hmm. world so mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm just catching on mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and with all that sort of like the sort of fine line between immobile mm -hmm. and mobile mm -hmm. mobilier there's all these different facets um, of, of economics as well. Just mm -hmm. this morning, I met a new neighbor of mine who, where I park my car on the streets. He parks there too, and he is the second tier after being living on the streets. He lives in his car. Because if you can't uh, own real estate for the reasons that you described, you might be lucky to own that space on wheels, which is not legal. Right. It's illegal, so it's it's on this kind of fine line, and, and the, so you were like sort of brave enough to basically walk that fine line, almost like you know balancing on it. Yes. And another example is the next picture, number eleven, where actually the sort of walking the line has worked, right? Yeah, we have we have a lot of food trucks in Hawaii. It's, it's caught on tremendously yeah. and it's convenient I mean um, you, they occupy a space kind of like the parklets mm -hmm. uh, only for a bit mm -hmm. you know, lunch hour rush or mm -hmm. sometimes dinner mm -hmm. uh, and then they're gone and I mean that's, and, that's and, something. and they weren't allowed either uh, right originally, they weren't, they weren't and they kind of smuggled their way through right. And so now they have, they have conquered their sort of uh, place right. in culture. Overcome. And that. if you like watch documentaries and stuff like that, it's, uh, you can't think without them again. So they, yeah. they made their way in and established themselves. Right. right. And, and many restaurants that are established, fixed restaurants, mm -hmm. have their food trucks mm -hmm. that also mm -hmm. go out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it works.
So in another example, number 12 is from the contemporary architectural scene. Uh, this is Tom Kündig from Olsen Kündig Architects, mm -hmm. who did this obviously in another climate, which we can see with that yeah. white stuff, which we don't have here. Mm -hmm. This is in Washington, the state of Washington. Um, and the reason here to put these uh, basically uh, things, these rolling huts, how he calls them, on wheels, was once again uh, tricking the, the system because he was not allowed to build there permanently. So putting them on wheels was right. tricking the system. Right? Yeah, and there's there's always these loopholes we try and mm -hmm. find uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if there's an alternative that is actually a benefit to our mm -hmm. islands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, smaller space means smaller waste. And yeah and many more things. So not surprising, the next picture, that usually you build a house and you start laying the foundations and yeah. you dig in the ground. So not right. surprising that you have done something different here. Yeah, this is a good friend of mine, Kevin, who helped uh, quite a bit with, with uh, the, well, the trailer, for one, and some of the framing. But um, yeah, so, so building the trailer frame to incorporate all my structural members was, mm -hmm. was the task here. And um, that's, that's what you're seeing. And, um, yeah, it's a mobile unit, so uh, how, how much capacity can, can the trailer hold? There's, you know, it looks kind of fun. That's actually uh, almost a year and a half ago now because mm -hmm. I'm in school. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of neat to see that skeleton. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it is a different foundation, but eventually wheeled to where it sits now. And there we go. Here's the next step, right? Here the wheels yeah. are on. Right, and, uh, right. Which we usually call, um, you know, the, the frame uh, is on, but usually in, in sort of uh, frame tectonics, um, we're used to the two by fours mm. or, or something like that. Yeah. But these are eight by eight. So they're six, six by six. Oh, okay. And six I got six. a quite a bit of wood actually from from Recy reuse Hawaii mm -hmm. uh, and these were uh, six by twelves originally and mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend well Kevin again had a timber saw and I ripped them into six by six mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what those are and they used both for the post and beam yeah or the yeah. six by six so a little a little harder to work with dimensional changing uh, mm -hmm. as you moved up it mm -hmm. was not mm -hmm. your typical balloon frame mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. took a little more thought and consideration transitioning between the post to yeah. the, to the beam and then to the roof frame and mm -hmm. so on which the next picture shows as well, which also we have as the permanent background, but here you're on it. Right. So um, we're going to take a little uh, break here for a minute to give some of my colleagues a chance to promote their shows, and then we're going to be back for Wyatt's uh, Cabana Mobilier. Thank you. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha. I'm Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider a weekly Thursday show at 3 o'clock that goes all summer long talking about issues living in a condo association. Each week we bring experts to talk about the rights and obligations of owners and boards of directors to successfully run their condominium. It's a great educational show, answers a lot of questions. We hope you'll visit us sometime. Aloha. 15 back. So we're back to uh, Wyatt's Cabana Mobilier. <laughs> We just, uh, before the break, we looked at the, the, the bone frame structure, which I see as a reconnecting, actually, sort of the scholar in me to sort of pre-contact uh, way of building. Mm -hmm. Because then, when after contact, we, we imported the American 2 by 4 you know. Right. And, and this is going back to the sturdy posts, um, familiar in my culture as well, the vernacular, which we called um, half-timbered. Timber frame. Frame, so you got a, you got a more significantly sturdy stud, right. you know, um, so basically uh, spread out more. Right, and then further. and then your your you know smaller framing is it's for the windows and the door jams and yeah. so on. Yeah. Um, go to two by fours, but uh, it is it is a 
speaking to the pavilion model, so to you know, mm -hmm. this idea of, of welcoming the environment in because we do have such a pleasant environment, so why not mm -hmm. have it indoors too? Uh, Sure, you, you need to shut it out sometimes, so you get shutters, and, mm -hmm. but predominantly it's, it, my motive was to keep it as o open as possible, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right, and, that was and, and the next picture shows the main protection here right. on the islands is from the rain, especially on, in the, the area you are where it's more yeah. rainy and also keeping out the sun, right? It's a tongue, so, they call it, you know, or they used to refer to it as, <laughs> as that, but it's the corrugated sheet metal, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And I did it a little unconventional, running the, uh, the, uh, the waves uh, lengthwise, um, but that actually slows the rain down as it comes off the roof, so it ended up working out. Very poetic um, as well. You probably yeah. get some nice acoustical tripping. Yeah, I like the sound you, you, of it. You hear it. If a mango falls, awesome. that's a little different. Awesome. But, but the rain is nice. It's still awesome. Yeah, it is I love that too. Very pleasant and um, awesome. Yeah, wind funnels right over it. Perfect. So, next picture uh, shows you. Huh. You know, with the roof on and uh, getting to the next stage. Right? Yeah, putting down the subfloor, um, which is something I actually thought about when I was putting down the, f the finished flooring, uh, which I use bamboo. But I thought it would be it would have been nice to go with uh, flooring that I could have just put right over the joists. Mm -hmm. Now, in hindsight, mm -hmm. hindsight being 2020, you know, you mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. have too many regrets. But mm -hmm. I have ne another one to do, and and many for that matter. So this yeah. is prototype number one. Exactly. So I've got I've got a chance for that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Putting up. Some so here you're putting up the sort of I try hesitant to call it walls. It's more like a threshold. And right. it's once again connecting to the days where we did uh, not the invasive double wall construction, which right. is for mainland. Right, um, and more and, waste. And you're more waste, necessary. and then you get this cavity space. Uh, I have the privilege to work with your colleague Nick for his The Ark, and his approach is a healthy home because right. he has family members who got sick in a, right. in a, in a double right. wall. So go right. back to the single wall construction. Right? Yeah, I'm, it is illegal at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, to do this, but uh, it makes entire sense. What, why not? If if you don't need that much insulation, yeah, yeah. that piece of ply could serve for mm -hmm. that insulation mm -hmm. just fine. And, and, and don't worry, you have uh, co-host uh, moderator Howard Wick, our hero, with you, uh, who is fighting for that things you uh, do good. will be legalized That's again. Good. So he's working on changing the code and has. So right. thank you, Howard. Thanks, awesome. Howard. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I didn't so know the next picture uh, shows you pretty close to, I mean, projects like that are never completed fully, right. and that's the beauty and the nature right. of it, but it's obviously cutting closer to finishes, right? Yeah, this is actually the back door um, into the bathroom. Uh, that way, if you're muddy, you don't have to go tromping through, even though it's a small fl floor, it, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to bring your mud inside. But those doors, in fact, are actually from reuse as well. So. Uh, another endeavor to mm -hmm. recycle material mm -hmm. tends to mm -hmm. to actually be a little more work, but satisfying mm -hmm. and, of course, in, more environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, getting a little closer, kind of skinny, huh? Yeah. In this view, you can yeah. see how narrow it is. I'm constrained to that, the the yeah. ability to drive it on a on a road yeah. eight eight feet wide. So I, I like that term, actually, skinny over tiny, mm. because tiny homes becomes, once again, sort of a brand, a mm. movement, and there's, you know, always, right. it becomes buzzwordy, right. and then certain things get lost on the way there. Like green. Also, I wouldn't, like green as well, also, I would be hesitant to call it uh, the ADU, accessory right. dwelling unit, right. because, once again, there's all these stigmas. This is right. a thing on its own, I think, that could be read in many different ways and right. sort of open-minded and right. open for where it goes, where it rolls, literally speaking. Yeah. And so next picture uh, also shows another detail <laughs> here. Yeah, this is the shower wall, uh, another piece of sheet metal uh, corrugated, and eventually there'll be a privacy screen around that mm -hmm. shower deck that I'm mm -hmm. standing on now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, an idea to repel the water and, and, and also to not use the inside space for, for the shower, yeah. opening that, what would have been for a shower, 
for storage or something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you and don't who doesn't like showering outside? Awesome, right? yeah. If you can like be if in the you jungle, can. you know, yeah. outside shower. Right. Like Tarzan right. or like Adam <laughs> way back, you know. Right. Adam and Eve, and you don't bring, it's also very uh, sort of logically clever because you keep the water, which is the problem for mold, especially right. in more humid areas outside, outside the house. Yeah. Yeah. It's also something that, uh, these are all vernacular sort of like inherited knowledges that you basically sort of revisit and reinterpret. And that, by the way, gets me to the next picture. Hmm. It took me a while. I, I sort of, your project sounded very familiar to me, and I mm. tried to dig in my archives mm. there and my mental ones and That's finally pretty. found this one here, like which is a colleague of mine who went the opposite way. Um, this is Stephen Atkinson, who uh, started to teach. He's American. He started to teach in Germany, so the opposite to me. And my very first work, got published a couple times, actually mostly in this thinking of Amin Lee Hai Mi in a Korean magazine, C3. We were published next to each other, and I always wanted to reach out to him, and I never took the chance, so hopefully so this, here this reminds me, so here it is. And I see this, this is in, in Louisiana, so this is a, a reinterpretation of the vernacular of the shotgun house, and the next picture shows the, what's typical for that is that the house has these two parts, and then there's this lanai, um, which becomes the common kind of space and room in between. So once again, the same typology, very skinny house, right. very sort of simple as, as, as a space and as a form, uh, right. the materiality very uh, rugged. Right, more, very, more of a um, budget concern. You, you can still use cheaper materials and, and exactly. depending on how well you can execute it, it's going to look Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it's going to look good. And how well it's executed gets us to the next picture because this is how you, how well uh, you executed uh, the 22, please, before that one, uh, the picture. Um, Floor. Okay, yeah, this is. Uh, well, this this is something to speak to. So you can see that it's single wall pretty mm -hmm. clearly in mm -hmm. this. And, and in fact, I'm standing up uh, getting an, just one more little framing piece in, but um, the wall I'm leaning on, that or that structural member, is is uh, I'm standing in front of the clear story windows, which is another, I guess, uh, endeavor to to keep uh, as much of the facades open as possible. So mm -hmm. those are basically just big windows that will mm -hmm. have shutters over them, mm -hmm. um, and at the moment they look out at a very uh, majestic view. So. I yeah. was going to say, I probably could see myself having these shutters open most of yeah, the time. Yeah, mostly they will be. Um, and this is, uh, I subtitled this Wyatt Tarzan <laughs> here for obvious reasons. Yeah. So it's really a very sort of, uh, I mean, you're, you know, you live here and, you know, you grew up here. And so this is, this is your tribute to a more um, sort of respectful of of your home right. approach in, right. in building and in, in rethinking, um, you know, the way, sort of the invasive way, which has unfortunately right. taken over right. on the island. And and with that, um, there's a current movie out in the, just out of the cinema's next picture and just probably on DVD <laughs> next that I, told yeah. you to uh, as sort of a watching uh, uh, re uh, recommendation <laughs> I hadn't watched I haven't and, watched it yet and but I, I've seen it on the on the plane on the way back coming from Christmas and um, it's good it, it, it really talks about the sort of you know our desire to be reconnected to the elements and living out there living a free open-minded yeah. way more balanced to use the term and then there is the other side, which is the city, where everything is so controlled and over controlled. So these two worlds, you know, wrapped around this very personal story, right. clash into each other. Yeah, so, they I mean, do clash a lot. There, there is harmony. There could be uh, between the two, and and we mm -hmm. see that in some of the sustainable mm -hmm. cities around the world that mm -hmm. are, you know, the the cutting edge, uh, like Copenhagen and, mm -hmm. and Portland and. Anyway, there's, mm -hmm. there's definitely examples of how to blend those two and make yeah. some harmony. Yeah. Right. And I think you did. I mean, next and, and last picture is uh, called huh. this Wyatt Fantastic, as alluding to Captain Fantastic, 
where, uh, where you just sort of, and I want to make very clear, this is, as I said at the beginning, this is self-studies in architecture. Right. When I had the privilege to share some of my experience with you, right. um, that opened the opportunity that you shared that with us. Right. And yeah. so I'm, this is for me the best because you've done something I've never done mm -hmm. uh, because I've always, you know, thought a lot of architecture, but I'd never built it myself. I always had others building it. So you are sort of a self-trained, a builder, thinker? I did a bit of self-training, um, mm -hmm. but I did have a mentor for three years. I did an apprenticeship mm -hmm. um, with with a good friend of mine. Uh, and it started actually with my dad's house. We mm -hmm. started building there, and then he was the foreman there, and we moved on to a few mm -hmm. other homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got my base with, with someone very skilled. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you, George. Appreciate all that. Uh, you've done for me, but that actual that last shot was actually a friend of mine Jake who looks mm -hmm. kind of like me mm -hmm. um, And he's a builder himself, so um, He was helping me put down the the subfloor for the loft and mm -hmm. and we were hashing something out discussing on how to you know finish off uh, pro I don't know actually can't remember ex that moment, but mm -hmm. um yeah, it, I, I really enjoy the hands-on aspect, yeah. you know, taking the, the thought, of course, being in architecture school, mm -hmm. taking a thought and actualizing it yeah. in, f from drawing to, you know, mm -hmm. the physical realm. Some things get lost in translation, and, but, y you know, you discover things mm -hmm. through actually making mistakes, uh, end up being really positive things, so. Uh, Great thing. We're, we're getting close to the end of the show, so I want to thank you for bringing something to our realm, island, school, which many other schools have. They have, we call this design build mm -hmm. in Arizona. My dear colleague and friend Mary Harden does this professionally, very mm -hmm. successfully, where she works with students on designing students. and building projects. So you step ahead, fill a gap that we don't have in the curriculum kick our butt to that concern, which is much appreciated. Thank you. So keep on doing that, and we look forward to see you again and yeah. see where that thing rolls, yeah. rock and roll. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a film of it rolling awesome. these days. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. So thank you, Wyatt, again. Appreciate it.